Hey, when it comes to the importance of repairing cars correctly, it's really important to follow the OEM guidelines. And we're at the SEMA today and talking to Chris Toby to talk about this MDX behind us here. Chris, tell me more about this car. What, what did you guys do to this vehicle to really strengthen the vehicle up? All right, so Roger, this is a 2014 current MDX body shell. And one of the big things you see on this is this big yellow piece is a one piece stamping, 1500 megapascal tensile strength. That's about 217,000 PSI. So this is really, really strong steel. So what you're saying is this was meant to keep the door frame in, intact? Yes. And is, if I'm reading into this, what you're saying with the, with the steel that you're using, we can't section this anymore. No, you can't section this. So this, is, this represents just one of the many, many technological changes that are happening faster in the last five years than we've seen in the previous 30. Now this piece is located actually under the aperture skin, correct? Correct, under so, the outer panels. So, uh, you know, aperture damage might be repairable in some instances, but if it gets into this area here, non-repairable, yep. is that what I'm hearing? Correct, once this, once this ring is damaged, it must be replaced as a complete unit. Okay. And if you follow the procedure in the body repair manual, it's easy to do. Okay, so the Insurance Institute has come up with a 20% offset crash, which means it catches the, the corner of the vehicle, missing the bumper beam in most cases, and driving all the forces into the, D, into the ring of the car. So let's show me what this thing looks like after it's been crashed. So Chris, explain to us what's happened here in the front of the vehicle. Okay, so this vehicle went through Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's small overlap test. Okay. This is a production vehicle as built, and Basically, this test is 20% of the frontal width of the vehicle, which means you miss the front frame member. And the body structure is designed to take that and direct the energy up through the rails and up through the door ring and around the compartment so that everything in the compartment remains relatively intact and we have a survival space. Okay, so that survival space is right in here. So if I don't have any distortion that really has affected the door opening, Correct. then I'm, I'm good to go. So does this door still open after this wreck? Try it and see. Okay. That is amazing. So after this major impact here. 40 mile an hour impact. The, the people could actually walk out of the vehicle. Correct. So what if it's done incorrectly? Well, would you like to see an example? I would. Okay, let's go take a look at one. So Chris, what happened to this car? So this is another 2014 to current MDX body shell and this vehicle actually had an improper body repair done to it, and then it went through the exact same IHS small overlap test that we looked at. So what you're saying is they actually went ahead and if we look at this here, they sectioned this ring? Correct, section, butt welding, all the things you're not supposed to do were done to this car. So they used techniques that may have been four or five years old and acceptable back then on this new model car, and it failed like this? Yes because what you knew five years ago can make you very dangerous now. So what you're trying to tell me is that things I learned along my path, even though I may have been be experienced body tech 20, 25 years, I need to forget a lot of that stuff, go to the OEM repair procedures and apply new techniques. Yes, you have to approach everything with an open mind and forget what you've learned in the past. So if I'm getting back to this again, Chris, what I'm finding is that if I use an old technique and mix it with new techniques, I could have failure in this vehicle. Correct. So sectioning this ring, as you mentioned over there earlier, is unacceptable. How does that really play out in the car? Absolutely. What happens is the heat that is put into the steel turns the steel from a nice ultra high strength 1500 and reduces its strength considerably. Okay. So if I use the improper repair method and I have a wreck like this, I can see that damage looks very similar to the previous model over there, but I also see that there's more damage going into the dash area of the vehicle, the door is buckled up. It, the door does not open at all. So basically, it's not transferring the damages around the vehicle, it's driving them through the vehicle and can injure the occupants or kill them. Exactly correct. You're seeing the results of this additional damage is the result of energy that went somewhere it wasn't supposed to go. Wow. So if I, if I want to learn more about this and where can I find these repair procedures? So going, and by the way, when did this start? I mean, what year did it begin? We started using 1500 steel 2009, so it's actually been around for about eight years now. So if, I'm, if you're fixing any Honda products out there, it's really important that you have the OEM repair strategy so that the proper applications can be applied to that model car. And speaking of that too, if I go back to 2009, I can't use those strategies on a 14, can I? I've got to use it specifically for the year. Every car is different. Every car has to be looked up. The information has to be referenced every time. 
This is not a lowest common denominator business anymore. Okay, so if our audience wants to get information regarding the proper repairs on Honda vehicles, where can they go to? They can go to the Honda Independent Repair and Tech Service Express website, techinfo.honda.com. Much of the information is free. It's all free if you're a Pro First Certified Shop, and you can also subscribe to that same information and get the exact same information that our Honda and Acura dealers get when they get it. So you may want to check that out because when you see the crash test and how this car actually folded up in the process, I think it'll be quite eye-opening. And if you want to know more about the Pro First Certified Body Shop program, then go to profirstinfo.honda.com. And your Pro Service pro program, basically Pro First Service program, that's basically qualifying the repair shop with equipment, training, and the outcomes of success that they're expecting on your Honda products. Yes, the, the purpose of the program is to ensure that body shops, that we have body shops that have the knowledge, the tools, the training, and the information to repair Hondas and Acuras completely and properly every time. Because you gotta remember that every improper repair begins with the best of intentions and a lack of information. Wow, that's really good advice, Chris. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And check Welcome. out that website.